I'm overjoyed and honored to welcome today's revered guest, brothers, Senor Alejandro Vasquez Medina and Jorge Vasquez Medina, two of the co-owners and driving forces behind the renowned Vecor de Mexico Marbles Company Empire. We are also joined by the lovely Mary Vasquez, daughter of Alejandro. To, and without her, none of this would be, have, have been going on today. So thank you so much, Mary. Yes, thank and you, we are joined by Marbles historian and consummate professional, Mr. David Tamulevich from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Thank you, Stephen. Welcome, guys. This is so exciting for me. I, um, uh, I'm just uh, I, I'm beside myself to get some of this documented. And, you know, for the story, it, it, it's, it's a long one, and it's probably 90 years of marble manufacturing. You guys pretty much ruled the industry in, for several decades, and it started with your father and your uncle, Carlos Vazquez Cornejo, and Jose Vazquez Cornejo. Right. Alejandro, could you tell us a little bit about how things started way back in the 1930s with your father? My, uh, my father and my uncle were <laughs> young there at that, that time. And they were already making cement marbles. But uh, they had an uncle... Luis Cornejo, who was importing all kind of uh, goods from Europe, many of them from Germany, and he he said to, to my father and brother, "Why don't you go into the glass marble?" My father said, "Because I don't know anything about glass, and much less my my brother Jose." So they wanted to to produce to, to get into the business, but they, they didn't have money. So uh, after many things they they did, they were getting money from uh, a third person, and then the, the, the uncle Luis Cornejo got mad. He said, "I am going to put the money." Don't take money from anyone, okay? Come wow. Here. Yeah. So they started with uh, borrowing money from the uncle. And my father started to know everything about glass because he didn't know anything, okay? Yeah. It took two years for my father to make the first glass marble. Two years of trying and trying wow. and trying and getting advice from here, from there, from many, many, many informers. And from there, he started to, to get better and better marbles every, every, uh, all the time. Le ayudaron mucho a los alemanes que estaban en México. Okay. Los alemanes que tenían un, un departamento de, de vidrio en México para enseñar el vidrio. Okay. In that time, his, Jorge is telling me, there was a group of Germans in Mexico helping people develop glass. Uh, from there, he got a lot of advice. Uh, so, uh, it was a German group of Germans in Mexico who helped my father. My, my uncle Jose was in Guadalajara in his own business. Really, my father was the one who took all the responsibility. I see. So, so was, um, so approximately what year do you have any idea when they started actually producing the glass uh, effectively? I say in 1934, about. Oh, then. wow. Wow, that's super early. I mean, it's pre World War II. So yes. that's. 
and you were the only company in the country, right, producing marbles. Is that true or false? It is true. Uh -huh. uh, uh, all, <coughs> but we, uh, I mean, it was not vacuum all the time. It, yes. It started with uh, the name Industrias Cornejo. Industrias so, Cornejo. That anonyma. Uh, the name of the capitals is Ixa. Okay. Ixa. Okay, Ixa started to make the first serious uh, fabrication of marbles, and they started the commercialization of marbles. Then wow. with time, uh, with time from advice of uh, of the father of Carlos Slim, who was my father friend, he he took some business partners, some uh, Lebanese people, uh, the name was uh, Jose and Tufik Musi, two, 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 two brothers also. I see. Well, they, they started growing in Ixa, gr making marbles and, uh, and, and other products like plates, mold bottles or penicillin, uh, powder and many things and they um, started to make bottles and and then my father Are you watching? and uh, the round things for for putting in the illumination oh, light bulbs oh bulbs no 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 light bulbs what the cover of the body oh, oh okay the shades yeah, yeah. yeah. The okay yeah wow and you also produced, I mean, at some point or another, um, shingles for housing. Is that it true? Is, it comes much later. Much, much later. later. Yeah, you okay. guys, I mean, you dove into a lot of, <laughs> you know, a lot of different industries, really, with this. Yeah, yeah, but, we, the, but the co industrious Cornejo, that was in Mexico City. Is that true? Mexico City. Yeah. Did your father or your grandfather save any of the marbles that they were making back then it, it, the, the, from the point of view of the the maker that's us we don't pay attention to that right <laughs> attention to the factory and the world yeah. function and everything but we don't collect uh, marbles yeah and that's very sad yeah so at some point my father decided uh, I just want to make marbles. Let's get separated, and everyone by events coming was they take different way. They did it, and around 1950s, El Aguila started working. Uh, just uh, a few hundred uh, yards from from the Ixa factory. But no more partners with the Musi people. They were very nice people. Uh, nothing bad about their, yeah. them. They were wonderful people. Wow. But they stayed with Ixa, and my father yeah. found uh, Lagila. Wow, and that's crazy. And Lagila uh, really started the, the real thing of marvelous because then my father was 100 percent concentrated focused the yeah focused on the marble production there was no funding from the government no funding from the government no, no, never 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 right never, never. wow the government in mexico pushed you down yeah amazing even it's in the states you had uh, some help get, uh, we some do. help from the government here it, it looks like a Let's uh, disappear the people with uh, some intelligence. With wow, uh, you guys hearing this? Okay, he, he said only when we started exporting, th there was a uh, there was a, a bank uh, helping the exporters 
Mexico exporters. I understand. So, so yeah. were, were there marbles in Mexico in the 30s and 40s? Did they come from Germany or the United States, or were there no marbles there? There were marbles coming from Germany in uh, the very beginning. That was the reason why my father decided, pushed by his, their, their uncle, the, the uncle was importing goods from Germany. Among them uh, was glass marbles. Okay. That, that's the... Que Jorge, di que Jorge diseñaba las máquinas. Yeah, uh, Jeff, he, okay. Just because... Los, lo, el, los checos, los alemanes y los mexicanos eran sus profesores en la universidad. No, 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 no. Mi papá trajo los, los técnicos. Ah, ok, entonces esto digan. Ok, you know, the, we are talking about German teachers, Czech teachers. Yes. This, well, my father imported people from those places. Yes, the best in the world. Germany. No, because I yeah, like. He ended living in Mexico. Right. So, is this Dr. Worth and Mr. Ullman? Are these some of the glass chemists that you spoke of earlier? Uh, the principal help that we have in the, in the chemistry came for Dr. Wirt. He was uh, Mexican born from German parents. Ah, yeah. And, uh, but he was uh, tremendous. Uh, this doctor uh, invented the co uh, uh, Corel glass in in Corning. Corel? Oh, Corning, Corning glass. For yeah. Corning, yes. Oh, he, he, yeah, he was part of the Corning glass industry uh, uh, factories. Yeah, yeah wow. He, he was behind the Corel glass. Oh, uh, that's world class. He came to Mexico and yeah. uh, started working for Cerveceria Modelo. I see. Cerveceria Modelo is the, 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 the Corona responsible. Oh, cool. You know, the, you know, on your iPhone, the glass panel on your iPhone, that's Corning. That's the, uh, the touch glass. The tu teléfono, la pantalla tu teléfono es video Corning. No. Yeah, they made that. That glass is from Corning. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yes, yes. We're good. <laughs> All right. So, um, but I tell you what, you know, you were producing the glass from scratch. Yes. Probably, and and the glass had the qualities of what American marbles stopped doing decades earlier, the, gr the glass from scratch. We stopped doing that before World War II to save money. But okay. your marbles continued to yes. show, you know, show the high quality glass that was long gone in, in, in this country. Do you understand that? Yes, perfectly. Yeah, yeah. That's one reason why they're you know, very collectible. My, my father always was pursuing perfection in everything. Hey, it's true. In his life, in his family, in his work, in whatever he he was doing, he was a perfectionist guy. <laughs> I believe. Hard, I believe. And uh, he he started working as a watchmaker. Oh, wow. Yeah. So His first he jobs. Was, when he was 20 years old. So yes. Precision. Much before of the marbles. But he said, this is not for me. I need to, make, to do another thing. To make Papá, another thing. ¿pueden, decir, ¿pueden hablar de que, de que no fue a la escuela, de, que, de la revolución y eso? Sí, Hablen de él. Okay. Can they talk about my grandpa? Can you, they tell yes, us about my grandpa? Please, yeah, anything, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, he's the hero of the story. It's where it begins. Exactly. And uh, yeah. Mary is pushing his abue. <laughs> it's that good. was the nickname for uh, grandfather. <laughs> okay. My abue. Okay. 
Yes, yeah. Abu uh, wasn't able to study in a regular uh, school because we was in the middle of our revolution, the Mexican Revolution. Yes, 19... 1910. 1910. Started in 1910. And so my father was five years then. Yes. He was born in 1905. So the, 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 the battles and the war and everything was not in Mexico City. It was in the rest of the country. So they live always f frightened and scared of uh, going anywhere. Yeah. They, it could come a troop uh, at any time of the day and do whatever they wanted. So no schools in Zamora, Michoacán mm. is a uh, born town. But he went to a regular school to primary third grade no more no more then he studied con uh, libros con libros 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 he was a self teaching person yeah. he self self taught self self reading yeah, yeah wow that's amazing really yeah, yeah. yeah. my father never pronounced a word of english never Mm -hmm. But he could read the National Geographic. Wow. He understood English. But he, for That's some reason, amazing. he never wanted to talk or speak yeah. English. A lot of your success, of course, it came from your father, you know, and how he worked. Course, course. Same work yeah. ethics. Okay. And Jorge is telling me, and my father was always helping poor people. It's another of his things that he qualities, quality. Very religious person, and it's Catholic. He woke up at he woke Catholic up at religion. five in the morning every day and went to church every single day. Every day, one of the, his main things where he was living is to be near a church. Oh wow! <laughs> he was to attend mass every single day. Yeah with my mother they were well known in whatever they live thank you for sharing that um how many children did you, your parents have how many siblings um eight or? we we all are eight 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 okay. five men yes and, and three girls beautiful story the yeah. familia yeah, well, yeah it, it, the first, I was the fourth, the, I was the fourth man in a row. I see. The fourth boy. Then uh, a pair of twins came. Oh. Yeah, I, I have twin sisters. Uh huh. And another sister, and then uh, another guy. And today, <laughs> uh, Jorge is 80. The ages are Jorge is 84 and Alejandro is 81. Is that true? <laughs> you guys are fantastic guests. I can't thank you enough here. Well, I, I am doing this because of my father. My father deserves to be known as the real hero of this film. <laughs> he it's true. Yeah. And this is the legacy of your family. So, yeah, yeah. I, and thank God, you know, you guys are sharing this and everyone can see and they can understand more about, you know, a company that, I mean, from this country, we didn't have to, we didn't have much knowledge of. My father never wanted to tell any, anything to anyone. So he, he wasn't public. He yeah. was a very, very private person. Yeah, Never, that's one of the reasons that nobody knows about the history, the the real history uh, of Baco. Hey guys, you know I um I wanted to, again I wanted to thank you so much for your time here today. God bless you both. Vaya con Dios mi familia. Vaya con Remember, Dios. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. Yeah. My father was the hero of this picture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
He, he took us in, into this. Gracias, Carlos. <laughs> and thank you for spending some of your time with us today. I hope you found this video informative. Please tune in to the next upload of our Rise of Accor de Mexico Marbles Company series with a closer look at the El Aguila Company and their killer canicas examples. Gusto conocerlos. <laughs>